Hey guys, welcome back to another whiteboard chat. And today we are going to talk about why your GI protocol failed. It's kind of a clickbaity title, but why your GI protocol may have failed. So I wanted to do this because I, I get this a lot, honestly, like people that have already done some kind of GI protocol in the past, whether it was with a coach or with themselves or, or whatever it may have been, and they're back in the same position or a lot of times even worse. So I wanna talk about why those things may be happening of course, with instances like this, there's always a lot of nuance, a lot of context, but at least these five, and I could probably add some others, but at least these five things that are very, uh, very common, these big concepts, right? So what are they? First one, the root wasn't addressed. And that's, you know, probably the most common reason. They simply don't address the root of the problem. Um, you know, and it could be a lot of things, you know, it could have been past use of birth control, um, could be stress, could be some type of like antibiotic use, you know, all these things. Now, a lot of the time there's, let's say most of the time, there's always a stress component. Learning how to obviously address that, but also learning how to permanently change the way that you think and the way that you operate, because you can't just shift your mindset for a gut protocol and then go right back to what you're doing. I mean, I get that a lot. When can I go back to, you know, X, Y, Z? Well, when can I go back to maybe like losing weight or, uh, you know, things like that? Okay. I get it. But you don't want to go back to a, you know, necessarily go back to like a really destructive lifestyle or habits that you may have been doing before. So keep that in mind. That's not to say that you can never prep again or things like that. It's really case dependent, but you simply cannot go back and accumulate that total amount of stress that you did over whatever the period of time was that caused your issue. So the root doesn't get addressed. I mean, that's just, you don't fix, you know, you put a bandaid on it, take the bandaid back off, may not be healed. The wound may open again, right? So for lack of better words, incorrect protocol or lack of testing to verify. I see this a lot. So do you need a test for every protocol? Not necessarily. Some common stuff, like a lot of common things I like to do out right out of the gate that addressed a lot of issues. Maybe there's no protocol needed. Maybe the things people thought that they had because they did research or were told by somebody or whatever, maybe they aren't there. So we do a lot of baseline, you know, baseline things first, which again, address, that's this, right? That's what we're doing first. And we might not need anything too intensive in terms of protocol. I mean, people are thinking protocol or thinking supplementation or more advanced testing. Now, I like the test. I think it's a good idea, especially because most of these issues have more than one culprit, right? There's more than one thing going on. So, you know, I work with so-and-so, they said I had uh, candida, okay? Ran a protocol, still having symptoms, of maybe different symptoms. I go in, I do a GI map, they maybe don't have candida, or they only have a little bit of candida left, but they have H. pylori, or they have um, C. diff, or they have a parasite, or whatever. So, you know, however much money, however much time, etc. And you got to do it again, try to do it correctly. And I get these all the time, I mean, I'm every week, you know, so if you need a test, just test, spend the extra money up front. So you don't need to keep doing it over and over again. And of course, with that address the root, no post protocol care. So I mean, that kind of goes into incorrect protocol, but aftercare is huge. That's, that's why doctors kind of fail us on these because you can get you know, SIBO is a great example. You can get like rifaximin, for example, a more GI specific antibiotic that can address it. But if there's no aftercare to repopulate the gut or, and the, the root is not addressed, okay, I guess lump those two together, then where do you end up? You end up probably with some symptom relief and you end up with probably knocking out some of that uh, dysbiotic bacteria or opportunistic bacteria. And then you're kind of back to square one again, eventually, because that normal flora is depleted. So no post care. And you could say no post care would also be not addressing the root because you go back to doing what you're doing. So that's also post care, right? Sustainability, that's kind of lumped into that addressing the root as a whole. We need something that's sustainable habits that are sustainable, so on and so forth. But there's going to be instances where we're talking competitors maybe where we are prepping and those things aren't sustainable. So we, we can, we're only doing those in short stints, but our overall habits are sustainable. What we're doing most of the time is we're able to sustain that. Um, sometimes that might be within the actual protocol itself because it's very extreme. The person is maybe super stressed out trying to do it and they can't, 
right? For whatever reason, whether it's the food or the supplementation or whatever, heard some crazy stuff. So sustainability is obviously an issue. Lack of consistency. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately with some of these protocols, you have to be pretty, pretty on your game. You go out and you drink all weekend, then you might be offsetting a week of progress, um, especially some of these bacteria related protocols, Candida, SIBO specifically, because you know, you're upping bacteria, you're just not, you're losing progress. And this is why in some cases have to add weeks to the plans because things just get offset. And in that 12 weeks or 10 weeks or whatever we may have been able to do is now 14 or whatever it might be. So it is important. Obviously, sustainability and consistency, those things need to mesh, and that's difficult sometimes. So as a coach, like I like to meet people in the middle to an extent, but there's gonna be some things that need to change. But you know, I, I think that we can do it in a reasonable fashion that's sustainable for most people as long as they're willing to kind of shift their mindset into a positive direction. So those are five main points I would say why GI protocols fail most often. And uh, they're kind of all over the board, everything from the protocol to the post care to the, you know, the pre care, the foundational phases, so on and so forth. So hopefully you're thinking about all of this stuff when you're trying to heal. And this is hormones too, right? It's really the same thing, you know, same kind of concept. So make sure you're thinking about all of these things. It's not just like, man, I need to get through this 12B protocol, but I'm going to be negative as hell and I don't want to do it and da, 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 da and I'm just gonna get through and then I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. It's not gonna work. It's not, I mean, and if it does, it's not gonna last. So, you know, just keep that in mind. I mean, it's something I tell clients all the time is, you're not ready, you're not even ready for protocol if every week's like negative, 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 negative. It's like, well, <laughs> you're not gonna sustain those results if you even get them to begin with. So hopefully this is helpful, gives you some thinking points if you are in one of these situations. So have a good one.